I'm Jamie Dempsey, and I'm on a quest for a mysterious cloak mentioned only in the vaguest of rumors. Everything I've heard points towards the southern Philippines, where the old ways still live in the Manobo warrior tribe. It is said that their priestesses can weave a cloak from the threads of my life, recording my past and blessing my future. I'm on a quest to find the priestesses and prove myself a warrior worthy of such a gift. of my journey, I ride strong for the twin provinces of Samar and Leyte, where I rip its rivers, evade its traps, and ride its tides. I've passed through Manila, Panay, Cebu, and Bohol. Now, from Kalbayog, on the island of Samar, I have to ride over 300 kilometers to reach the port in Liloan. Much of Samar's population lives along its coast, as the waters of the Pacific Ocean provide food and jobs. But some choose to live in its valleys, as the mountain ranges provide some shelter from the island's frequent tropical storms. Outside Manila, I see fewer and fewer cars. Instead, the popular vehicle is the trike, consisting of a motorcycle and a sidecar. Wow, look at this! It never ceases to amaze how much a single bike can carry and the structures that are built to carry them. This one has a sidecar with front and back seats and is holding six people. Awesome. All right, guys, off you go. Bye. <laughs> it's amazing how people adapt their vehicles to local conditions. In fact, the people in Piranhas, my next stop, have done just that. A river once used to transport illegal timber has been turned into one of the island's biggest attractions. Hi, Karen. Hi, Jamie. Welcome to Samar. Thank you. Thank you for meeting me. I've been so excited to get on one of these torpedo boats. What river are we on now? We're right now at the riverbank of Ulot River. Cool. And you know that the island of Samar is the third largest island in the entire country. That's right. So this is not just a river, but this is history. Extreme rides down the river in torpedo boats are wildly popular. It just gets a little tricky during the dry season. And that's why they call it ulot, because ulot means monkey. And when they get to the point of the river where it's too shallow, the passengers just move like monkeys. They do the ulot. <laughs> in order to, to get the, boat, the moving. boat moving. <laughs> and to be able to navigate again to the not shallow parts of the river. Will we be doing that today? No. Okay, good. Well, I've heard so much about it. Now I'm really ready to try it out. Go, Jamie. <laughs> Let's go. The rides are so popular and profitable that the area's illegal loggers quit cutting down trees and got into the torpedo boat business. It's easy to see why. The boat's 16 horsepower engine and the river's currents combined, blasting us forward at up to 160 kilometers per hour.
45 minutes and 10 kilometers later, we reach Denny's Point. We finally reached our resting place and what a great place to take a break. There's beautiful big boulders to sit on and have a snack, nice calm water to take a dip in. It's simply beautiful here. And the ride here was so much fun. It was a little bit rocky, but it was a thrill every time the boat almost tipped over. <laughs> it's time to head back soon, and from what I hear, going back upstream is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Let's see what happens. This is what locals call the salmon run, because we're swimming against the current. The journey back takes twice as long, but it also has twice the rush. Finally, after one and a half hours, the wild ride ends. Still a touch shaky from the adrenaline rush, I ride three hours south for the link with Lake Tay Island. I'm about to cross the San Juanico Bridge, the longest bridge in the Philippines, to get to Lake Tay. But first, I had to make a pit stop to take in this view. In 1975, when the San Juanico Bridge was completed, it was the longest suspension bridge in Southeast Asia, measuring 2.2 kilometers. Crossing it will take me to Leyte, an island that lies right over a major fault line. The clashing of the Earth's tectonic plates gave the island its distinctive mountains. And as I draw closer, they beckon with the promise of more adventures. Crossing the San Juanico Bridge brings me to Tecloban, the most populous city in the eastern Visayas. In the past 120 years, three deadly typhoons have struck Tacloban, each nearly leveling the city. The most recent one, in 2013, swept a 3,000-ton cargo vessel inland, smashing houses and killing people. Three years after the typhoon, Tacloban is still recovering. I want to give whatever help I can. Well, I came here because since I'm in Tacloban, I thought maybe I'd do a little volunteer work, so that's why I sought you out. Oh, that's good, it's good. So you're ready to work a little bit? I'm ready to work. All right, good. Tell me a little bit about what you do. Okay, so we're USAID, USAID Rebuild, and what our program does is we construct approximately 310 classrooms throughout Lete and Samar. That was a result from the Yolanda devastation. That's a lot of buildings. It is. It's a lot of buildings. How long does it take to build one? It takes approximately 180 days. And how many workers do you have on it? 45 workers. I'm sure you could use one more. One more, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, put me to work. Tell me what I can do to help. Okay, so we want to come down this way. Tacloban is one of the most disaster-prone cities on Earth. It's susceptible to storms, floods, typhoons, and earthquakes. It's very therapeutic. The 
buildings built by USAID are built to stand up to all that. And I'm no engineer, so it's good that I stick to the cosmetic part of construction. empty-handed. Oh. I have a few things to donate for the kids to start school off right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. They're right over here. Okay. Here it is. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> As the schools are completed, they're handed to the Department of Education and the city government of Taklavan, complete with classroom furniture and teaching kits. Eventually, the classroom should benefit thousands of students. Hopefully, I've helped make a difference to some of them. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. You're Taklaban, but then I came across a riot of color and music. My next stop can wait. I've got to find out what's going on. I saw these beautiful dancers and heard the music from the road, and I had to stop and find out what kind of dance is this? This is the dance of later, uh, which we call finicling. So it originated here? Yeah, it originated here. Well, it looks difficult. Can it is. someone who's never done it maybe try a little bit of it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Every time you perform, you ask the audience to come to the uh, stage and uh, try the finicling. I'm your audience. I'll yeah, try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe if you would like to try. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys think I could do it a yeah. little? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. All right, you help me, though. Yes. Tinickling was invented during the Spanish colonial era. The word tinickling is a reference to a local bird called a teakling. Rice farmers love to trap them, but the bird is so nimble that it can dodge the bamboo traps. Tickling dancers are meant to be as agile as a tickling. Hopefully I don't disappoint. We will have our bamboo clicking first. It looks like this. Once you get the basic rhythm right, you can apply it to any move. <laughs> For now though, I'm going to continue with the baby steps. From the basic step, we can move into something which uh, will complicate, but still using the same rhythm, same uh, dance step. Ready? Let's try it. Go. Right, right, back. From here, you are going to start turning on your first. One and two. So you go right, right. And two, turn, turn, then you go up there. And then you repeat the whole thing. Let's see how much I learned in the last two minutes. <laughs> OK, go. And come back, turn. Repeat. Come back, come back and turn. turn. And turn. Uh, and turn. Okay. Finally, it's time to go full speed. I 
When I say Leyte, most Filipinos think of World War II. And apparently one of the best places to learn why is a bank. Hi, Sir Mike. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for meeting me here. No problem. I'm looking for a little bit of history on Leyte, and I was told that this is the place to be. Well, you've come to the right place. In each of our branches, we have what we call a history war. That has displayed all the photos from World War II. Okay, great. Well, can you walk me through and tell me a little bit about what happened here in Leyte? Sure. Why don't we start over there? Okay, great. When World War II began, U.S. forces in the Philippines were under the command of General Douglas MacArthur. He was ordered to evacuate just before the Philippines fell, but promised to return. In this photo, you see General MacArthur landing with key officials of the 24th Division. And they have a monument very near here. You should check it out. No way, yes. I have to ride by and make sure I see it. The power of the Japanese Empire made MacArthur's promise seem impossible to keep. But two years later, he did indeed return. He came ashore with his staff on this very spot to lead Filipino and American forces in the liberation of the Philippines. Just 10 minutes right south is the coast of Tanawan, the skimboarding capital of the Philippines. Skateboarding is like skateboarding meets surfing in shallow water. You could kind of call it a board game. And it's getting increasingly popular in the Philippines. Can you tell me why skimboarding is so popular here? Um, it started with uh, Tim Garrett from California. He made a wooden board. Then uh, he said, RDR, run, drop, ride. So he didn't even say it's a skimboard. He just he said, did. take this, okay. run, drop, ride. That's yes, simple. That's <laughs> and from California, which is exactly yeah. where I came from. So yes. it's only fitting that I come here and try it as well. Yes. <laughs> I don't promise I'll be very good at it, but it's pretty hot, so I'll take any excuse to get near the water. To catch the wave, you need to first run it and drop left slide. Just bend your knees and just balance on it. Uh -huh. I can imagine I'm just gonna run, drop, jump, fall. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you ready? Uh, let me see you do one first. Okay. And wave, then it, then it comes back. Okay, I think I can do that. Run, drop. Ha <laughs> ha 
Okay, so we're waiting for the wave to come and then start going back. Right. Just get on it. <laughs> Drop the board, ride. <laughs> Obviously, Carl, I fail at this. I'm much better at riding motorcycles. <laughs> so I'm going to hand this back to you. Okay. And maybe you guys can show me a few tricks. Sure. Oh, I wish I had more time to learn, because these guys sure make it look good. Too much time having fun. Time to catch my ferry to my final destination, the home of the Monobo tribe, where I hope to complete my quest for the legendary priestess's cloak. But first, I'll have to prove myself a worthy warrior.